so i was as i was saying in the first part of this production is that um these are the principalities and rulers of the earth that people worship they are um the princes are the angels that descended and they are generations and um the lower you move down the ranks the lower you move closer <laughs> to the men that are currently walking upon the earth because the mingling did not stop at the at the first one the first generation mixed with the men remember the first generation was also a, a considerable new, huge number of angels so if you study other other uh, lost script you'll uh, find out that some of them married amongst each other so what um what used to happen and <laughs> funny enough you'll find this being practiced in some in some cultures upon the earth let me not mention them but there are cultures that put um uh importance on what they refer to as purity of blood or blue blood you've had something like that so um in the culture of these uh, angels that are referred to as princes the closeness to the throne was also there it also corresponded to the rank and power so the closer um to the throne uh, was also um marked by not just closeness in terms of being a relative but also uh, how pure your blood uh, how much how concentrated your blood was to in um in reference to the king so most of these people would marry within their families to ensure that um the bloodline remained um the blood of the king only so you can imagine now in a family the king would have married his sister his sister would give birth to children who would marry um amongst brothers and sisters or uh step step brothers and step uh, sisters if the sisters and brothers are not available there are various communities that still practice um this uh this um tradition and some of these tribes um you'll find some of them are in africa some of them are in uh asia you'll find that these are tribes that also have another belief that the ancestors came from from the sky <laughs> so don't brush off, brush off some of this um quote in quote myths now speaking of the princes of the earth i've said that whenever you find uh people uh, that are worshiping especially idols you'll find that they fashioned um, these gods in the form of stones some of them are just uh, fashioned in the form of um objects like the lingam of um of that is uh, of shiva which also represents a part of his body that there's a story behind all that so these are princes and when you um they're just they're not uh gods that people make up they're beings that actually walked upon the earth 
some of them still walk upon the earth depending on their rank. Remember I said rank depends on the purity of blood. So the higher you go, the more uh, the, they're likely to uh, still be alive and the lower you go, the more they're likely uh, their lifespan is closer to the lifespan and power of man because they have mixed themselves with men who are bound by the powers of the earth. So be, they became men and were also bound upon the earth. So, these are... Um, there's a place in the book of Psalm that says, Lord, um, protect me from the rulers. And ref- uh, it further um, refers to rulers as um, the hand of God. That's why you need to be careful when referring to these beings as... They're what you call the hosts of heaven. The hosts of the kingdom of darkness. Remember I said that in the book of Enoch it's written that the spirits of um, the children of men with angels shall remain upon the earth and they shall oppress them and torment them and they shall be evil spirits upon the earth. This is because those beings that came out of the admixture were so vile in their minds and in their actions that the things, the kind of things that they did angered the Almighty so much that he said, my spirit shall not abide with man anymore. These are habits that are still practiced by demons in the spiritual world. Some of you will have encountered some of them uh, in your dreams because these are spirits, the same spirits that lived on that day are still roaming the earth, still doing the kind of um, unspeakable acts that the Lord Um, was angry about them because they are unclean, incapable of harboring holiness in them. But they are still rulers because it's written that they became the great men of the old, they made cities, became kings of cities, and became great men. In their days, there was so much corruption that the earth was destroyed by the flood. So when you're addressing um, rulers or princes of the earth, take note of um, the... um, the spiritual power or authority that they have over the earth. Remember, I said take note. I did not say um, worship them or honor them because they are sons of darkness, so um, you don't need to honor them. We are children of the kingdom of God. However, Don't uh, don't be so rash in going to to poke them or to um, let me give you an example. I saw one preacher in um, he was in India and uh, he was given a chance to speak to the people and. The place where he stood, 
there was there were these uh, idols um, of various Indian gods. So when he started speaking, um, he started um, insulting, throwing insults at the gods. So that's that's the kind of thing that I'm telling you. That um, it's like it's opening um it's opening a a door or uh, making a breach in your protective shields because as I said these are rulers of the earth and the word rulers is not there for decoration it's there because God has given them a certain territory to rule. Of course, um, they are answerable to the Almighty in the end, even though it's the kingdom of darkness. So there are boundaries that they should not cross. And for them to stay within their boundaries um, or to f- um, for them to stay within their boundaries um, or to leave their boundaries when you start poking um, at them without reason, you give them a reason to invade your um, your heritage or your your shield and to expose yourself to attacks. Well, um, the other time, um, I remember, and this is something I learned over time, that when you're, um, when you're the lowest, um, at your lowest point, or when you feel the most exposed to demonic attacks, that is not the time to go on. Um, an all-out attack of um, all kinds of demonic powers and principalities. That's because when you're at your lowest and when you're being attacked, your shield has been opened. And until you can repair it, and ensure that you're back in that protective um, compound that is the grace of God. It's um, it's not advisable to go poking the lion that is hiding in the forest because they will come after you and there will be no shield to keep them to keep them away. Yeah, it's it kind of works like that. That um, we usually call it um, in in legal practice, it's called opening the opening the door. For example, if somebody uh, brings up the issue of character when they are testifying, it gives the other party permission to also examine um, the character of the party, of the person who has brought it up as an issue. Because normally, character is not one of the things that are to be discussed when you're discussing that um, a crime has happened. But if that door is opened, the other party can use it to gain entry. So that's what I mean. Don't go to the forest poking the lion. You find a bear seated minding their own business. You go and poke it in the eye. You find the dog chewing on a bone minding their own business. You throw a stone at it. That's not very wise. And... um, it's uh, it's that it's those kinds of action that keep people fighting unnecessary wars. Some wars are necessary, but some 
are completely unnecessary.